They just had to have one of the most disappointing losses on my birthday, didn't they? Welcome to From Center Ice. My name is Courtney, and the Blackhawks are still determined to make my birthdays miserable. Of course, that game was on Thursday, the ridiculous back and forth game with the Columbus Blue Jackets. The Hawks did also play on Saturday. I only caught the last part of that one. The Ice Hogs were playing at the same time, so I had to pick and choose which one to watch. And with what the Hawks did to me on Thursday, I went with the Ice Hogs, who also lost on Saturday. But at least I got to see a win on Saturday. I saw the Blackhawks beat the Blue Jackets in overtime. What a beautiful goal from Dabrinkit from Patrick Kane, because of course, both of these teams went to overtime, the Ice Hogs and the Blackhawks. One of them came out victorious. So that's where I'm at on the past two games. I sat here after Thursday's game. I was determined to make a video and I just couldn't think of anything to say. It looked like I was finally going to get a birthday win and then they just, I don't know what they did, but it was bad. The Hawks got scored on first. Cam Atkinson in the first period went into that first intermission down one to nothing. Not a huge deal. You can come back from that. The second period ended with a three to two lead for the Blackhawks with two of our rookie defensemen getting their first NHL goals. Ian Mitchell was up first. I was in the middle of sending a text message and before I could even hit send, Nicholas Bowden was scoring his first NHL goal. That was absolutely wild. Wild. How can you not be happy as a Hawks fan after what just happened there? Pia Suter added the third goal in the second period after those two got their firsts. And then Jack Roslovic scored to get one back for the Blue Jackets. So that was the three to two lead heading into the second intermission. And then we have the third period. And I'm going to read out these goals. 29 seconds into the third period, Patrick Kane scores to make it four to two Chicago. Six minutes and 39 seconds into the third period. Boone Jenner scores to make it four to three. Seven minutes and 59 seconds into the third, Jack Roslovic scores again and we have a tie game four to four. 13 minutes and five seconds into the third period, Alex Dabrinkit once again takes the lead five to four Chicago. And then... 17 minutes, 19 seconds into the third, Michael Delzato ties the game at five. And with less than three minutes to go in regulation, Kevin Stenland, who I've never even heard of, I don't know who this guy is, scores to make it six to five Columbus. And that's where the game ended. There were so many highs and then a very low low right at the end of that game. It was quite the roller coaster and it looked like the Hawks were going to be able to pull this one out and then the pucks just kept going in. That's definitely a game that Kevin Lonkinen is going to want to have back. He did make up for it on Saturday. Like I said, they won that game in overtime, but I'm still not quite over this game on Thursday. You have two rookie defensemen getting their first NHL goals back to back. When was the last time you saw that happen? You had all of these positive vibes. There was no reason to not close this out, but they just played sloppy hockey. They couldn't clear the puck. Once again, the Blackhawks inability to clear the puck out of the zone came back to bite them and it bit them hard. It feels like those two goals by Ian Mitchell and Nicholas Bojan couldn't even be properly celebrated because of how this game went down. Had the Blackhawks won this game, that would have been an incredible story. And now it's just kind of a cool one. Of course, to Hawks fans, it's really neat and you're super happy for these guys, but around the league, it's like, oh, well that happened and then they lost a horrible game. <sighs> So that sucks. But going back to Saturday's game, Nicholas Bojan gets his second goal of the season. He opened the scoring for the Blackhawks in the second period after once again, they were down one to nothing heading into the first intermission. After Bojan scored, Cam Atkinson got another one. I'm getting really sick of hearing his name. And then Carl Soderberg got his first as a Blackhawk. I was able to see that goal, so that was exciting. I had tuned into the game with enough time to see that goal at the very least. Also, there was a fight in this game. Brandon Hagel and Patrick Laine? I don't know. Weird things seem to happen when I'm not watching. So then once again, a Blackhawks game goes into overtime. Patrick Kane with the puck on his stick. Earlier in the season, that was kind of a terrifying thing. As of late, it's gotten a lot better and it was a lot better in this one. He sends the puck over to Dabrinkit. It was bouncing a little. He redirects.
tracks it at the net. It's in midair. He swats it into the back of the net. The Blackhawks win three to two. Still doesn't redeem them for what they did to me on Thursday, but it was a good feeling nonetheless. So a lot has happened in the past two games. Maybe when the Hawks face off against the Detroit Red Wings tonight, it'll be more of a normal game. Probably not because this is the 2021 Blackhawks and nothing appears to be normal. But let's go over the three questions I have for tonight's game against Detroit. Question one, will they start their road trip on the right foot? So tonight's game against Detroit is the first of six straight games on the road for the Hawks. They have two games in Detroit, two games in Carolina, and two games in Columbus. Columbus taking on the Blue Jackets once again. The road was not very kind to the Hawks to begin the season. Of course, then they went into Dallas and won two straight road games. So maybe this road trip won't be completely detrimental to the team, but it would be very nice if they could start it off on the right foot and carry those vibes throughout the next six games. So will they do it? We can all hope so. Question two, will the Blackhawks get back on the power play score sheet? So this is being a little nitpicky. They've had four power plays in the last two games they scored one power play goal on Thursday, but they went 0 for 2 on Saturday. So those aren't terrible numbers, but with how hot the power play has been this season, it's just very nice to see and gives us some nice feelings when maybe some other things aren't quite as nice. And I mean, it always helps putting the puck in the back of the net. Of course, having more power plays gives me more chances to scream about power play unit 2 not being out there as much as they should be. So maybe they only get a few chances, but they score when they are out there. I'm a simple person. I take what I can get. Question three, will it be another one goal game? The Blackhawks have played 13 games since they last faced off against Detroit. Nine of those games have been won by one goal no matter who the winner was. That's ridiculous. And this is why this team is taking years off of my life because nothing can be simple. It has to be stress right down to the final buzzer. So the real birthday present here would be if they could just make up for what they did to me last week and give me a nice easy game to watch where I don't have to be stressed out the entire time. I'm not gonna hold my breath for that one. So those are my three questions for this game. Of course, when the Blackhawks faced off against Detroit last time in January, that seemed to be where their season turned around a little bit. Their two opponents before that were Tampa and Florida. Those series clearly did not go very well. They were able to take both games against Detroit, then they went to Nashville and lost two, but they looked a lot better than they did against Tampa and Florida. Although that first game against Nashville is one that we just don't talk about anymore. But every game since then has been pretty winnable for this team, which is crazy to say since going into to this year, we knew they were going to be a bad team. And now I don't even know that we can call them a bad team anymore. I'm not gonna say that they're good, but they're competitive. None of us saw this coming with how this roster is made up. It is a great surprise, but certainly not one that we were anticipating. So hopefully we get some more good games again. Do you have any questions for the series in Detroit? Do you have any questions for this team for the season so far? I would love to hear them put them in the comments below. All of that being said, thank you so much for tuning in. If you want to hear more from me or from Center Ice, you could subscribe to this channel or head over to fromcenterice.com. You can keep up with all the latest podcast episodes, all the game previews and recaps, and all sorts of fun stuff. You can also follow along on the social media platforms. All of those are linked in the description to this video. I live tweet most games. If that's something you're interested in, follow us on Twitter. Other than that, we're just around talking hockey whenever we can. Thank you again for tuning in, and I will catch you all after this game. Bye, guys. Thank you all for watching. Please hit that subscribe button to catch more From Center Ice content. If you could, hit the like button on this video, maybe share it with a friend or two, and while you're here, check out the podcast playlist and catch up on some old episodes. We will catch y'all next time. Bye!